ladies and gentlemen, this is it. She's back. She's back in my life. This, for those of you going back 10 years ago, a decade ago, this was my bike that I used to ride into London. It's a GSXR 1000 K7. I spent so many miles on this and this is the one that I took the detour down that green lane on and basically capsized it in the big hairy wet puddle. And, uh, and now she's back. Look at her. She still looks pretty good, to be fair. You know, there's th all these little things, like this is a little uh, a lorry reverse into me when I was in London. Smashed the wing mirror and smashed that and bent the side stand. Little memories, you know. But actually, for uh, it's 15 years old now, this bike, and it's had a pretty tough life. Uh, it looks pretty good. Yeah, I don't know why everyone moans about Suzuki quality. It's pretty good. And I've got a K1 in there, which is amazing quality as well. So they do last. But anyway, so I sold this by mistake, really, a few years back. And then kind of instantly regretted it, but stayed in touch with the guy I sold it to, lovely bloke. Every year I'd text him going, oh, want to sell it back yet? And he'd be like, oh no, one more season, one more season. Anyway, he texted me and was like, hey, thinking about selling a K7? I was like, I'll have it. Obviously a bit of negotiation, but um, here she is. Twin arrows, decap pipe. And before I sold it, I put this Brembo 1920 RCS master cylinder on, M4s, Serioro discs. And yeah, I spent quite a bit on it actually. Oh, hello, Matt. <laughs> and um, yeah, then sold it stupidly. And I sold it for four grand. And he had it for, I think, three years and put about 5,000 miles on it and I bought it back for 3,250 quid. I think that's a pretty good deal. And it had all the track fairing with it as well. So anyway, without further ado, let us get on and ride it. Um, what's he done? He's done the valve clearances check, which of course, being a Suzuki, there was no problem with. And that's it. Oh, he replaced that heated grip. <laughs> as you can see, this one's like really run down and this one's a bit too grippy. Here we go. Oh yeah, as an extra added security, <laughs> the uh, the clutch switch doesn't work, so you have to basically hot wire it. If you hold that there, and then boom, Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt. I mean, it's a bit annoying. I'll get around to fixing that. And yeah, it doesn't have any mapping on, which is why it's hunting a little bit. So it could do with a power commander, but uh, anyway. I've just bled the brakes and sorted those out, so we should be good. Little Olin's steering damper down in there. But it's like, honestly, it's like being back on an old friend. I love this bike. I've had, I, I bought this bike second hand with 6,000 miles on it, and I sold it at about, I think it was 30,000 miles, and I think now it's got 35,000. So I've done What's my maths? 24,000 miles on this. And uh, a lot of them were miserable running in and out of London. <laughs> we'll do, we do, we do a start, do a start. You ready? Are you having a piss, Boot? Oh, she's back. She's back in my life. I mean, it still handles weird. There's something wrong with this. There was something a bit wrong with it before. Not weird, just... I don't know. I think the shock needs rebuilding, basically. But let's not worry about those niggles right away. Annoyingly, I did actually go out with Lamb Chops Rides. He's just bought a K7 this year. His is way better condition than this. Uh, and we met up and had a little, uh, little bit of a ding-dong. I rung up the old Chopsy, who's over there, who's also just fallen in love with the K eight this is uh his looks like it's in much better condition than mine <laughs> let's go for a little um little cruise, cruise around. Sounds good. and uh assess each other's girlfriends but unfortunately my gopro fucked up again uh and i've just had to go out and buy this this is now a, a hero 10 i've just spent 500 quid on it so it better bloody work uh, the friendly sports touring nature of a GSX-R1000. And yeah, so also, I thought I'd make this video just because the last time we spoke on this platform, I was heading off on my travels around Europe on my GS adventure. I am now back. And uh, yeah, that was an amazing trip. 
I mean, it was it was really hard work actually. And I know it's kind of oh, you're only you know going around Europe. I get that. I'm not like a some crazy adventurer going through the Andes alone with a you know packet of baked beans to eat and that's it. But for what I needed in my life at that point, it was definitely definitely going outside of my comfort zone. Just to be alone for three weeks was um, was hard enough. But yeah, so that, that's, I'm going to be editing that shortly. Um, it's going to take a while probably to get, to get going and get how I want it to be. And also again, my fucking camera fucked up on that. So all the a lot of the good stuff, like I was going through Romania on the Transfagasian and I saw like real live bears and loads of cool stuff, but uh, the microphone fucked it up. So I don't know what I'm going to do. I'll have to have some kind of musical interlude. I'm not sure. Because the video works, that's fine, but the audio didn't, which is really annoying. So of course you don't even know that it's fucked up, and it was like that for two days. So a lot of Serbia and Romania is destroyed. What will be will be. If it wasn't meant to be, I often think that. If it, if it, if if a video fucks up, then I just think I, the only way I can deal with it is think to myself, well, it wasn't meant to be seen or heard. So yeah, I just thought I'd do this quick video because there's a there's a couple of videos, well one video of me riding into London last week on my GS and I just thought I'd, for people who keep up with the whole channel, I'm just updating you that I'm back rather than like, oh you're still in Europe, whatever, what's going on? So yes, this is me, I'm back. And it was bloody brilliant. Anyway, enough of that. God, it's just like second nature riding this. The amount of miles I've done on it, I feel like I, I feel like it's moulded to my buttocks. And it's just such lazy power, it's so nice just to go, oh yeah, well, roll her on, roll her off. I mean, it's still, when, you're, when you want to go fast, this is a very, very fast motorcycle. But it's still, it's, it's still in that magical era of no electronics and, um, yeah, it's up to you basically. But it's, it's, it's really rideable, it's super easy to ride, super easy. I just need to sort this shock out because it, it doesn't want to turn. And yeah, so I went out with uh, Chopsy on his K7. We did a bit of a swapsy. <laughs> a swapsy with Chopsy. That's what the video should have been called. Anyway, didn't work. Yeah, his bike's way better than mine. I don't know why his handles so much better, but it does. I mean, we did check the tyres and it only had like 18 psi in the front, but even when pumped up now, it's still a bit lazy to turn her. But that's not why I bought this bike back. I didn't buy it for performance. I didn't buy it for any other reason other than if any bike is synonymous with me, I think it's this one. And then following that, it's a green GS Adventure. But this, this is it, isn't it? I did so much stuff on this and I love it. And for 3,250 quid, it's, a, it's an absolute no-brainer. Obviously, well, not obviously, but it didn't have an, he couldn't be bothered to put it through an MOT and all that sort of stuff, so I've done that, and uh, which is why, again, it was cheap. But he knew there was no sales faff, no dickheads coming around from eBay, it's just, yeah, I'll have it. And, and actually, what, he got to ride a bike for three years for 750 quid, bargain. So yeah, it's good to, it's good to have a back. There's two things I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna do with this. One, I think we've gotta go back and tackle that green lane, haven't we? And actually conquer it this time and get to the end. So I might get Bridgestone to uh, chuck me some knobblies that will fit on it <laughs> and, uh, and tackle the green lane. So that's definitely something I think we should do. The next thing I wanna do is, in March 2023, it will be 10 years, a decade, since I left to go to Barcelona on my own on this bike. It was like my first sort of solo road trip, which was the Tour de Baron series, which lots of you still love. So I think we've got to do an anniversary of that, haven't we? So in March, this coming March, so 2023, uh, I will be not re take not like going into the exact steps of that route, but yeah, redoing that trip on a 10 year anniversary. Can you bloody, bloody, bloody believe it? 10 bloody years. It's just, it's just so nice to have her back. I kind of wonder why I want any other motorbike other than this. It does everything. You can tour on it, you can take it to a racetrack. Oh, my neutral light seems to have disappeared. That's new. You can commute on it. You can go out for a Sunday blast on it. You can do everything on it. It's bloody brilliant. And then hopefully I'll still have it in another 10 years and we'll do a 20 years 
anniversary trip down to Barcelona. So yeah, that's the two things I want to do. Green lane, and we're going to smash it this time. And actually, that everyone goes, oh my god, you wrote off your bike. It cost me £41 to fix, which was a new uh, shift lever, I think. Was it shift or brake? I think it was shift lever. I mean, I'm not saying it was, I'm proud of it. <laughs> it, was, it was a mistake, but a funny mistake. And then I'm really looking forward to doing a 10 year anniversary trip. And actually I've been feeling really, I mean, again, I know I went away on that um, recent tour, the, the, comp, the, the European out of my comfort zone trip to try and kickstart my life a bit. And it did work and I definitely, I was definitely, you know, happy to come home and I appreciated all the things that I have in my life back here and just how good my life in the UK is. I'm not saying I saw abject poverty, but I, you take it for granted all the things you have in this country and we are really fucking lucky and this is probably, I moan about this country a lot, but it's still, it's got to be right up there with one of, if not the most tolerant, welcoming, wonderful countries you could possibly live in. I know there's a lot of shit bags in here, but yeah, as, as a whole, I think we're still right up there, the UK, as being a fantastic country. And um, yeah, and I, my, I missed my little house. And before I left, I was like, I don't want to live here anymore. I hate where I am. Now I like my little routine. So it was definitely good to get back. But I'm feeling the itch again already. And I've only been back, what, a month and a half? So I might have to do another little blast away before the summer's out to get my fix. <laughs> Look at this bike! Oh, I love you! Oh, he's so sexy. Well, you're not sexy. Well, you are sexy. You're sexy in a sort of reader's wives way. Or like a MILF. Like MILF sexy. I love MILFs these days. So yeah, I've actually got a... Um, there's a couple of options. I don't know whether just to keep her like this and just use it, enjoy it. Obviously I need to get the shock sorted. Maybe service the forks as well. But keep it in this sort of, it is what it is. Or um, make some kind of, or make it really cool. I don't know. Waste some money on it basically. So I could go racy. I've got actually a full set of track fairings and everything that I sold with the bike. They've come back. So I could have it as an, a, a nice cheap track bike. But it's almost a bit too fast for a cheap track bike. I'm quite happy with the old low horsepower RSV Milli R at the moment because if you overtake people on that they're like fucking hell well done because your bike's slow. <laughs> Whereas if you overtake someone this is still a Jix 1000 isn't it? It's still a fast bike so the, the, uh, <laughs> the excuse book is not quite as thick for this. Bloody solid whites. I think motorcycles should be allowed to pass on a solid white because the power the explosive power. I could get past this car in milliseconds. I mean, it's a bit of an exaggeration, but you know what I mean. But it's just nice to be out in the sunshine on my best mate. And this bike, has it ever broken down? I don't think I've ever been stranded on this bike. I, don't, I can't recall any time that it's let me down on that much. On, I mean, things have gone wrong with it, for sure. But I don't think it's ever stopped me going somewhere. And actually, after some of the bikes I've bought recently, you know, sort of old stuff, um, and seeing the state that they turn up in, this is actually in quite, a, quite good condition, really. And most of the things that are wrong with it, I know about, and I did. <laughs> Fuck you, now. <laughs> I mean, it absolutely lights up when you want it to, this thing. You forget just how bloody fast this thing is. Brakes. I think there's like some kind of. Oh, they just need warming up. I think maybe they're carbon brakes. They're so. Well, if they're cold, they're fucking shit. Oh, yeah, that's the heat now. That's good. Okay. Oh, yeah. Right, well, that looks a bit rainy over there, so I'm going to go over there. Fuck it up. Well, I definitely need to do the steering damper up a bit. I'll change it. <laughs> yeah. A long time since I've been on a mother bike. Well, I'm 90 years old, but. My first motor bike was a 1932 BSA. Oh wow, okay. Well, look after yourself. And you? 
What a lad. He's got Olin's in the back of that. Right, I'm going to have my um, Cadbury Nata and my Cherry Coke Zero. Oh, oh, for fuck's sake. Well, I can't open that now for about 20 minutes. Brilliant. Come on. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> I hope it wasn't in gear. That's exactly why you need the fucking clutch switch. How ironic. How Alanis Morissette. Why I'm refreshed. And actually, I can fit a um, a 500 milliliter bottle of pop under the seat here, which is pretty good. So yeah, what do we reckon? Leave it as it is, or waste some money on it by putting, I don't know, fork cartridges in it or something. Maybe get a, a used shock in the back of it. Or to be fair, I might as well buy a new one. I, I, buying used stuff, you just never know. It's probably shit. Or go full um, sort of enduro superbike. A bit like a sort of multi-strada, I guess. I'd love to find an endurance tank for it, but they are so expensive. I mean, that's another look I absolutely adore as well, is um, endurance race bikes. I love endurance race bikes, like oh, all of them, particularly Suzuki's. They just look so good, so good. And I love the sort of ethos of them as well. Like they're reliable, they're not over-tuned. And technically, you could stick a number plate on one and pretty much be able to ride it on the road. If you had a brake light. This is another junction of the SO fuel line. <laughs> it's so fucking big, this fuel line. This pipeline, it's fucking mad. It's just so livable, this bike. And actually, the pegs are, the, from standard, they're adjustable rear sets. Why, why don't bikes come with adjustable fucking rear sets? It's bananas, isn't it? It's like buying a car and the seat is fixed in the same position. It's just, you, it's ridiculous. And this is 2007 and it came with adjustable rear sets. And I'm sure even, I'm sure there's examples of that going back 30, 40, 50 years. But any of the new ones, like you don't go on an R1 with adjustable rear sets or a BMW. They're all like, well, that's it. Even the clip-ons are non-adjustable on most of these things as well, which is, again, stupid and the screens maybe i should design my own motorcycle i'd love that in fact i'm gonna do it and it'll probably end up just being this because it would definitely have to have twin exhausts or twin underseat exhausts would be even better a bit like my r1 oh. in fact that's that bike i need to get out of the closet before winter hits because that is a beautiful machine oh you good girl good girl Whoa. anyway Thank you for joining me. Um, it's been a wonderful trip down memory lane. I'm sorry I'm not in London. Maybe I'll maybe I'll ride it in and have a good old school moan to you. Um, well, in fact, put some topics in the comments below about what we can talk about, and I'll ride into London for you and moan on this. Deal, deal. All right, guys. Fist, fisting, fist bumps.